This is the A1519 target. This is the heart of the system. This is where all the information comes from. This target has a resolution of 20 millionths. It has an accuracy of one and a half tenths over the range of the cell. We have a full one inch of measuring range here. The laser beam comes across the absolute center of this target. We have a full half inch of measuring range on either side of zero. All three targets have the same dimension from the bottom of this hex nut to the absolute center of the target. This target comes with a magnetic base and a set of rods. What I mean by a set of rods, we have one about six inches long, one about four inches long, and one about two and a half inches long, or two and a quarter. These rods will screw into the bottom of this target. And we can set this in the base and adjust the height of the target into the laser beam. This has a battery in it. We have an AC adapter that plugs into here. We charge the battery. It'll have a, a, a usage time of about eight hours of continuous on. They have a series of dials on the side. The top dial is the, the system ID. So we have two people using two different systems in a, in a building. They're all both on the same channel and they're both using target number one. They'll cross talk so we can change the system ID. The bottom dials are target number. In this case, this is target number one. So the top dial is set at zero. The bottom dial is set at one. That makes this target number one. We have a couple of ports on the other side. We have a mini USB port that we can plug this into a PC and change some parameters inside of the target. And then we have another port here so we can plug in our R1308 digital readout for each, each target. This target sends data to either a handheld readout or a PC via 2.4 gigahertz radio waves. All the data being sent to the target, target number, the target serial number, the main thing is this target tells its height that tells whether this higher or lower than the center of the laser beam. If I get a plus number, the target is high. If I get a negative number, the target is low. We have a red filter on the front. The red filter filters out all but red light, light waves. So we don't want to touch that with our fingers. If we do, we get a fingerprint on there. We need to clean the lens. It has its own microprocessor built in. So all of the target calibration is internally in this target. So it doesn't matter if I'm using the, the laptop or if I'm using the handheld or if I'm using an R1308 readout. The numbers that are coming from the target are calibrated numbers. They've been, any error that, that's in the cell has already been compensated for before it leaves the target. Okay, this target does not have an on and off switch. It turns itself on, it turns itself off. So we kind of measure and get the right length of rods. These are gonna screw into the bottom of this target. And we wanna make sure this is tight. If this happens to be loose when we rotate the target head here, it's gonna raise and lower and give us some bad numbers. So we wanna make sure this is tight so we can rotate the target and it doesn't uh, unscrew from the post. We'll lower this down into the, tar the magnetic base and we're gonna set this so the laser beam is somewhere near the center of the target through the red line there. And you see the lights are off on the front. If I turn the laser beam on, they're gonna blink a couple of times and the target turns itself on. Now this is transmitting data to either the handheld readout or the, or the PC. When I move this target from position to position, I like to keep the base facing in the same direction so I don't forget which way it was and turn this because that's why we rotate it on the top so we can turn this. There's two little LED lights on the front of this. One of them is a charging light. So if we plug this in, we have an AC adapter that has its own battery in here. We can plug this in into an AC outlet and we'll charge the battery. While it's charging, this light will be turned on. When it reaches full charge, it'll shut the charging circuit off so you don't overcharge the battery and the light will go out. The other light is a low battery indicator. So if the battery gets low, this light will come on and indicate that you need to plug it in and charge it. If the light sweeps across the face of this as the turret is turning, so when that light hits this, we generate some voltage, what we can turn into 
basically a, a digital signal so we know whether this is high or low. When that laser beam leaves the face of this target, we measure the background light coming in. Because the background light is going to affect our reading somewhat, we measure that background light, and when the laser beam is on the target, we measure that. When the laser beam is off the target, we measure the background light so we can eliminate that from the, the readings. If somebody turns the laser light off, the lights are going to blink for about 30 seconds and it's going to shut itself off to conserve the battery. One of the biggest problems people run into with this are blinking lights. Blinking lights maybe from an overhead crane or blinking lights from a fork truck. If you're, you're using this and a fork truck goes by and it has a blinking light, this, light, this is, target's going to get two bursts of energy, one from this or one from the, the fork truck or one from the overhead crane, and it's going to get confused. The numbers are going to be jumping all over the place. So if they start jumping all over the place, look around for blinking lights. If you turn the laser off and this target stays on, you're going to, you're going to know that. Another thing is background light, the handheld or the PC. If you have excessive background light, it's going to give you a warning on the screen. So we provide light shields. These light shields just simply clamp on the front and they shield the light. They help. If you still have still getting the warning, you're going to have to shield the target itself. If you're working outside, we also provide these for sunlight filters. So we can put the sunlight filter on the front the same way, but it has a filter inside and we filter out the sunlight. Reflections. You may get a reflection off something back into the target. So these are some of the things that you have to watch out for. So that is the basic operation of the A1519 targets and some of the things that you could run into.